EMA part two, strategic financial management. Uh, in this session, we'll be discussing about uh, financial statements, what financial statements are prepared by a corporate to, to solve the requirements of various users of financial statements. So financial statements of a formal record of the financial activities that are carried out by an organization. It can be a, a single trader or sole trader business or a partnership business or any a corporate company. So we need to have a proper record of these financial statements, financial information presented in a standard format to answer the questions of various users. The users are nothing but who use this information, financial information, for making various decisions. The users of financial decision or financial statements can be management of the company, shareholders who invested in shares of the company, employees, financial institutions who lend money, suppliers, the customers, the regulatory authorities, tax authorities, or portfolio managers who advise their clients where to invest, where not to invest. And of course, the stock exchanges, whether the performance of a company is good or not, whether the shares are be listed or going to be delisted based on the performance of the company. Keeping in view of the requirements of these users, we follow a standard set of financial statements which are accepted globally. So the financial statements prepared by a corporate can include the income statement, which we also call it as profit and loss account, a statement of equity or retail earning statement, a statement of financial position, which we call it as balance sheet, statement of cash flows with a supporting notes to the financial statement. The notes to the financial statements are integral part of the financial reporting. Any financial reporting or financial statement, a set of financial statement without notes, we call it as incomplete reporting. So the financial reporting should include the income statement, the retail earning statement, which is also known as statement of equity, statement of financial position, statement of cash flows, and also notes to the financial statements, which will give the details of the financial information provided in the financial statements. Now let us concentrate on the financial statements, their format, the standard format. Begin with the income statement. The income statement shows the performance of any business for a given period of time, a particular period of time. The income statement includes only the temporary accounts. Temporary accounts mean the accounts are closed in that particular period, matching the expenses with the revenues. No amounts will be carried forward to the next period because they are matched then and there itself and the final result will be either profit or loss. So in other words, we can say the income statement consists of only the nominal accounts. Income statement contains only nominal accounts. What are nominal accounts? Nominal accounts are nothing but the revenues and the expenses. So the nominal accounts include incomes and expenses which are included in the income statement. The income statement, in the income statement, the revenues and expenses are matched together. The excess of revenues over the expenses, we call it as profit. Only profit would be carried forward to next period but no revenues and expenses 
will be carried forward. That's the reason why in the next accounting period or next financial period, we do not have any balances brought down figures for your revenues and expenses. Whereas your assets and liabilities, equity, will have opening balances. Income statement is prepared in two methods, a single step income statement, a multi-step income statement. In single step income statement, we just only deduct the total expenses with no classification from revenues. So there is no classification of expenses like what is the total admin cost, what is the total cost of the goods, what is the total cost of you know the sales, what is the total amount we spent in distribution, etc. It is just a summary of revenues that we earned and the summary of the expenses that we spent. So the difference between the total of revenues and the total of expenses, we call it as profit, which is the excess of revenues over the expenses, else we call it as loss. In a single step income statement, as we do not show the uh, expenses in a different format, therefore, it is not possible to show see the gross profit in the income statement. That is single step income statement. This is the reason why a single step income statement is not allowed for external reporting as per generally accepted accounting principles. So the corporates will have to use a multi-step income statement. Any statement prepared by a corporate should have a standard, you know, uh, principles, name of the company, name of the statement, what we prepare, period of reporting. So for the period ending for 31st December, uh, income statement, we should use for the period ending because we are matching the revenues with the expenses. The reporting currency with the rounding of policy. So follow these standard rules, name of the company, name of the statement, reporting period and the reporting currency. If you have any rounding of policy, even rounding of policy also. And sales which include uh, the total sales of your products or services, total revenues generated, which is net revenues after deducting returns and allowances, less cost of goods sold. So sales minus cost of goods sold will give us gross profit. Gross profit is the excess of revenues over cost of goods sold. Gross profit minus OPEX, operating expenses, will give us operating profit, which is also known as operating profit or EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. So from gross profit, when we deduct admin, selling and distribution expenses, we get EBIT. EBIT is nothing but operating profit, which shows the performance of a business for a particular period of time from the operations of the business. Then deduct finance cost, which is interest. Interest is nothing but the amount uh, paid to the financial institutions on bonds, bondholders, etc., uh, um, on using their money, borrowed money. Deduct interest will arrive at profit before tax. Profit before tax or earnings before tax. Then earnings before tax times the tax percentage is the tax to be paid. Say your EBT is $100,000 and the tax rate is say 40%. So you are going to pay 40% of 100,000 as tax and your net income is going to be $60,000. So on the income statement, we have a classification of profits at different levels. Therefore, we call it as multi-step income statement where you can see the profits at different levels 
or different profits. So multi-step income statement is allowed for external reporting. In the income statement, we use a term called COGS, cost of goods sold. It is nothing but when we sell a product for say, for example, $120, it has a cost that we bought it for say, for example, $80. We spent $5 to bring the goods available for sale. Then all the cost incurred to make the products available, to, available for sale is called as cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold in a trading company or in a manufacturing company is calculated using a formula called beginning inventory, cost of the beginning inventory plus net cost of purchases, which include purchase price minus any purchase returns, purchase discounts, etc., which is nothing but net cost of purchases, including even some transportation charges, etc. So you have a net cost of purchases plus beginning inventory will give you cost of goods available for sale. Beginning inventory plus net cost of purchases will give you cost of goods available for sale. You may have some inventory at the end of the reporting period unsold. So when you deduct unsold inventory, cost of unsold inventory, you will arrive at cost of goods sold. So in a simple format, your beginning inventory plus net cost of purchases minus ending inventory will give you cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. So this purchases include the purchase cost of the purchases minus purchase returns plus any transportation, etc. will Call it as you know net cost of purchases added to beginning inventory and deduct ending inventory to arrive at cost of goods sold. Deduct cost of goods sold from the sales to arrive at gross profit. You observe here on the income statement the final amount what we received was net income or net profit. This is the amount belongs to the shareholders we have two types of shareholders preference shareholder and a common shareholder preference shareholders we pay some fixed amount so after paying dividend to the fixed preference shareholders the left belongs to common shareholders so we need to indicate that how much of the profit which is available to common shareholders who are the ultimate owners of the company we distributed we distributed some you know fixed amount to the preference shareholders after that the amount is available to the common shareholders therefore from net income deduct dividend to the preference shareholders and divide it by the number of shares you will get the profit available to common shareholders per share therefore it is called as eps eps stands for earning per share earning per share it is mandatory that earning per share is to be presented on the face of the income statement so on the face of the income statement we must show what amount of eps we earned as the year passes, we need to show the shareholders that what amount of these profits accumulated in the business. Say, for example, we have a share capital of 1 million. We owned a profit of, say, 300,000. From 300,000, we paid $100,000 to preference shareholders, $200,000 is available from which we paid 40 percent of dividend to the shareholders 80,000 is paid the remaining amount is retained in the business one twenty thousand dollars is retained in the business from the total net profit of 300,000 we paid 100,000 to preference shareholders 
So the amount available to common shareholders is 200,000 from which we declared a dividend of 40% which is 80,000. After the payment of dividend, the amount of profit retained in the business is 120,000. So we need to give clear information about the total amount of capital of the shareholders, how much of the profit earned, how much is the profit distributed, how much is retained in the business, and therefore, what is the total money that is that belongs to the common shareholders? This information is included in a statement called Statement of Owner's Equity or Statement of Equity or Statement Showing Changes in Equity. So we need to present the information on the opening balance of owner's equity plus all the reasons for increase and decrease of this equity during the period including the closing balance so the next statement to be prepared by a corporate is called statement of owner's equity which includes the beginning balance plus net income or minus net loss any dividends which are paid will give you ending retain earnings plus beginning retain earnings, then it will give you ending retain earnings. So in the other format, you can see statement of equity look like this. Statement of owner's equity at the end of the year, beginning amount, this is the amount. Contribution, additional capital, if any capital is introduced during the year, plus net income in the current period, 75,000 plus 15,000, plus current year period 7500 gives you 97500 minus withdrawals which is nothing but the drawings 70 17500 so the equity at the end of the year is 80000 so immediately after the income statement we need to present the statement of owner's equity which is a uh, second statement in the financial reporting in a business the the assets of the business are contributed by owners which is called capital but in a corporate this capital is contributed in different formats it can be a debt capital borrowed money on which we pay interest Our preference share capital, we issue shares on which we pay dividend or fixed dividend irrespective of the profit of the company. And after paying the interest dividend to the debt capital on debt capital and preferred capital, the rest belongs to common shareholders. So your capital of a corporate consists of debt capital, preference share capital, and common share capital. We pay interest on debt capital first. Then from the net profits, we pay preference dividend. And the last priority is given to common shareholders. So common shareholders will get the residual amount after paying of uh, interest to debt holders and preference shareholders dividend. So common shareholders may get huge amounts, may get less amounts, or may not get sometimes. So they are the ultimate owners of the business. Therefore, they enjoy the pain and gain of the business, pain and gain from the profits and losses of the company. So now we understand that the capital of a company consists of preference share capital and common share capital. Preference share capital and common share capital. Now let us see the difference between preference share capital and common share capital a preference share capital a preference share capital is a, as we know that it is a preferred therefore we give some preference in case of you know in the payment of dividend so we give a dividend to the preference shareholders before we pay dividend to the common shareholders preference shareholders do not have any voting rights because they're not the owners of the company 
they do not have any voting rights so they don't cast their votes they cannot become director of the company but common shareholders have voting rights they can cast their votes during the you know resolution to be passed they can elect directors they can also be elected as directors of the company in the case of preference shareholders it is very much obligation to the com company to pay dividend because we clearly mention that say for example we are paying 9% dividend 9% 9% 5-year preference shares of $100 each which means that $100 is the face value of the share on which we pay 9% each year for 5 years so whether there is a profit no profit or less profit or loss still will have to pay dividend so there is an obligation to pay dividend to the preference shareholders but there is no obligation to pay dividend to the common shareholders the third difference is that preference shareholders will get accumulated dividend what does it mean if the company does not have enough cash balances the company has to pay dividend along with the previous year's unpaid dividend this is called accumulation of dividend if the company does not have enough money the dividend will be accumulated and paid to the preference shareholders but in the case of common shareholders entire amount will go into retained earnings but nothing is paid if there is no cash balance available the last and important uh, difference between preference shareholder and common shareholder is that in case of liquidation the company becomes default because bankrupt the preference shareholder will be paid first before the common shareholder is paid preference shareholder will have a priority over common shareholder these are the major differences between preference shareholders and common shareholders now with this we can conclude that the debt capital we pay first then preference shareholder we pay next if anything still surplus that will be paid to the common shareholders so common shareholders will get residual amount after the payment to debt holders and preference shareholders in the next statement uh, is called statement of financial position also known as balance sheet which shows the financial position of a company on a, any given date a balance sheet is a snapshot of financial position of a company at any given date you can know from the balance sheet the what resources a company owns what obligations the company has and what is the owner's money which is invested in the business so you have resources and obligations then owner's money so resources are nothing but assets of the business in which we invest the obligations and owner's money so we can say that the balance sheet shows us what we own which are resources and what we owe which are obligations this own and owe are presented on the balance sheet which are of permanent accounts means they will have closing balance if the closing balance is there will be carried forward to the next period so until unless an account becomes zero from this resources and obligations it will be carried forward to the future accounting periods therefore we call them as permanent accounts in other words we can call them as personal accounts and real accounts so balance sheet consists of personal and real accounts whereas income statement consists of only nominal accounts so in balance sheet we find the resources which we call uh, call them as assets both current and fixed in the uh, liability side we show current liabilities or long term liabilities and equity which we'll discuss in uh, uh, in detail in the uh, in a while
Now let's see the balance sheet equation. Balance sheet equation says assets equals to liabilities plus equity. Liabilities are external obligations which company has to pay to the outside. Whereas equity is internal liability which belongs to the owner's money. Owner's money invested in the business. So at any time when you want to see the owner's perspective, what is the value we have here, which is nothing but net worth or equity equals to assets minus liabilities. So when you deduct liabilities from the total assets, we'll come to know what amount belongs to the owner, which is called equity or net worth. Equity or net worth. So the statement of financial position is prepared the way we prepared income statement, giving the standard format company name, statement name, as it because these are all permanent accounts therefore we have to maintain the closing balances only not going to be matched with any other amounts so as it amount in dollars the currency reporting currency if you have any rounding of policy round off the amounts then show the assets first on the you know balance sheet the assets are now categorized into two types current assets and non-current assets. To remember current assets, you follow an acronym called CMA IP. Remember CMA IP. C for cash and bank balances. Uh, M for short-term uh, investments. We call them as marketable securities. A for accounts receivable. I for inventory. And P for prepayments. So remember in the same order, CMA IP will give us current assets. So total of current assets is presented here in a liquidity format means how fast we get cash from these assets. Then non-current assets. Non-current assets are nothing but the assets which are used in the business, used by the business, used for the business for a long period, more than a year. So which include the tangible assets, which we can see here, property, plant and equipment, less accumulated depreciation if you have anything intangible assets like copyrights patents franchise rights etc less amortization amortization so take the total of non-current assets and current assets we call it as total assets which will be equivalent to liabilities and equity let's see the liabilities and equity On the liabilities and equity side, we show three components here, current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and equity. Current liabilities are those which are to be paid in, a, in an operating cycle within a maximum period of one year, which include your supplier balances, we call it as accounts payable, accounts payable, or bills payable, any notes etc payable short term bank overdraft short term loans any incomes received in advance any expenses not yet paid taxes and the current portion of long term loan current portion of long term loan means if there is a, any loan of say for example 5 million which is to be paid in five annual installments along with interest. So at the end of first year, we pay 1 million. At the end of second year, we pay 1 million. At the end of third year, we pay 1 million. At the end of fourth year, we may pay 1 million. And at the end of fifth year, we pay the remaining 1 million along with interest each year. So this portion is becoming due in this year. Therefore, it should be shown under current liability. Whereas this 4 million, which will be paid in the next period, therefore it will be shown under long-term liability. Next year, one more million will fall under current liability. Remaining 3 million will fall under long-term liability. 
So the current portion of long-term loan should be treated as current liability. Take the subtotal, total of these items and call it as total of current liabilities. Then the long-term liabilities include bonds, loans and debentures, which are going to be repaid in uh, like, you know, more than a year. Therefore, they are to be shown under long-term liabilities. Take the total of long-term liabilities. Now, the next important, uh, you know, the section is equity. I mentioned here equity as super six to, you know, remember this. So maximum of six items you will find on the balance sheet under equity, which include, you know, that the share capital consists of preference shareholders money and common shareholders money. So preference share capital. And these preference shares might be sold at a price higher than the face value. So whatever you collect extra that should be shown under, you know, separate heading called paid in excess of par or we call it as premium, premium of preference share capital. Say for example, a $10 share is sold for $12. So you'll have to show $10 as a share capital and the remaining $2 as a paid in excess of par. So this $12 is recorded in two sections. One is towards share capital and the next one is towards premium. So you've shown these two amounts for preference share capital. The same way you need to show what amount of common share capital you raised and what amount of premium you collected from the common shareholders. So you got your four items here. Preference shareholders share capital, premium of preference shareholders, common shareholders share capital, premium of common share capital, and the fifth item is retained earnings. Remember, this is the result of your previous statement, which is statement of equity, in which you have some closing balance, like you had a net profit of, say, $100,000, you paid preference dividend of $20,000. The amount available to common shareholders is 80,000 from which you paid 40% as dividend, 32,000. So 48,000 is your retain earning here. If you have any beginning amount, say for example, around 12,000 retain earnings. So 60,000 is the retain earnings. So this amount should come here. Retain earnings is the fifth item in the equity. And the last item here is the treasury stock. Treasury stock is in minus here. So the total of this five minus equity will give you total equity. So what is treasury stock? If your company buys back some shares which are previously issued, say for example, 100,000 shares were issued by a company, but 1,000 shares were bought back. You are showing full 100,000 shares in the common stock that the company is authorized to issue 100,000 shares and were issued. But during the year, we bought back 1,000 shares. So you'll have to show under treasury stock what amount of shares company owned shares bought back from public. You cannot show 99,000 shares in the share capital because your company is registered with 100,000 shares. So 100,000 shares should be mentioned under common stock share capital here and whatever the number of shares your company bought back should be shown under treasury stock. And the next statement is of statement of cash flows, which is the last statement prepared in a financial reporting, which is also known as a cash flow statement. A cash flow statement tells us that where did cash come from and where did cash go? So it is nothing but a bridge between the income statement and balance sheet showing the details of cash in and cash out. So you can find the answers that what is the source of cash and what is the application of cash. Whereas in the income statement, it doesn't talk about cash in and cash out. It talks about only the revenues and expenses. Some of the expenses which are shown in the income statement might have not been paid 
some of the revenues which you have shown in the income statement might have not been collected but cash flow statement talks about what amount you collected what amount you paid so it answers your question that where did cash come from and where did cash go so the income statement or the cash flow statement is prepared after the preparation of all other three statements income statement return on statement and statement of financial position so without preparing these three financial statements you cannot prepare cash flow statement the objective of preparation of cash flow statement is to know that where did cash come from and where did cash go so you can find the answers here a cash flow statement is to be prepared in a standard format which is IAS 7 international accounting standards 7 there is a standard format as per the IFRS international financial reporting standards we follow IAS 7 as per this standard we need to prepare cash flow statement in three sections that what cash flows we received from the operating activities investing activities and financing activities when we add these three items you get cash increase or decrease during the year plus whatever be the cash beginning of the year what you have will match exactly the ending cash here so beginning cash plus the result of these three activities will give you ending cash balance which will be equivalent to your balance sheet cash balance it matches with that a cash flow statement can be prepared in direct method or indirect method so there's no mandatory that you have to prepare in any one of the methods no it is up to you that which method you adopted so the operating activities while preparing the cash flows from operating activities it is nothing but how much of cash you generated from the core activities of the business from your revenues so we show here that the amount of cash generated from your revenues and the amount which you spent on your you know the operations like expenses and all but you are not going to show anything uh, on the equation of assets repayment of loans borrowing etc here it is purely from the activities of the business not from any other uh, activity in investing activities we show that the cash generated or used in investing or disposal of the investing in simple in simple the inflows consist of sale of any fixed assets and investments and outflows consist of purchase of any fixed assets and investments when cash comes in obviously cause cash comes in when you sell your assets okay when cash goes out cash goes out when you purchase the assets or when you invest outside so these the amounts are to be shown under investing activities but no revenues no borrowings no repayment of borrowings okay the borrowings etc are to be shown under financing activities in financing activities any money generated by issuing the bonds stocks etc at the same time any money paid back while redeeming the bonds or you know repurchase of our own stock own shares or repayment of loans or payment of dividends to our shareholders so inflows include the issuance of bonds, debentures, shares, any borrowing, etc. Whereas outflows include repayment of loans, redemption of bonds, payment to payment to shareholders as dividend, or purchase of our own stock, which is called treasury stock. These are to be shown under financing activities. So you have a result of your operating activities, investing activities and financing activities take the total you find the change in your cash during the year add the beginning balance beginning balance you will get ending balance this amount exactly matches with your balance sheet current asset remember cmaip cash and bank balances marketable securities 
accounts receivable, inventory, and prepayments. So this exactly matches with your balance sheet item, cash and bank balances. So cash flow statement is the last statement prepared in a financial reporting. In simple, a cash flow statement begins with cash flows from operating activities, okay, then followed by investing activities, financing activities. The total will show you increase or decrease in cash during the year plus beginning balance will give you ending balance. This is exactly equivalent to your balance on your cash balance on your balance sheet. This is the end of the session on a basic financial statements. See you in the next session. Thank you and have a good time.